Hello again, I'm David Lee, founder and CEO of Mach 1 Financial, and I'm so pleased that you're joining us for this Money School course, which is our introductory course to basic money management. It's all those questions you always wanted to ask about money, but never knew who or even exactly what to ask. Your teacher for this course is the highly qualified Mr. Mike Frost. Mike has a master's in both education and finance, making him the perfect teacher for this type of material. And he's taught these types of courses at churches in different places for 17 years. So uh, an outstanding teacher. I think you'll see that during the course of, of these uh, classes that you're going to attend. So again, I'm so pleased that you're, you're doing this. This will set you up well for your future financially. Thank you, David. And now for money school. Things you've always wanted to know about money, just don't know who or where or what to ask. This is it. So thank you for joining us and let's get going. So before we can do that, we've got to cover some legal stuff. And basically, if you want to read through all of this, it says what we talk about here is high level information, not for you specifically. Okay. So don't run out and do something based off of what we do here. This is not just for you. It's for the general audience. And this next slide is the same thing but it's about social security. We talk about social security, we're not talking about your social security, we're talking about it in general terms. Now let's jump into money school. Who, is, who are you talking to? Who's that on the camera? Well, th my name's Mike Frost. I've got a couple of master's degrees, I've taught school, I've been a teacher, uh, I've taught this seminar class for over 17 years, and currently a financial advisor here at Mach 1. So I know a little bit about money, but really life experiences at 61 years old, I've done stupid with zeros on the end. So hopefully I can share with you some of our experiences so you don't have to. Okay, so that's who's doing it. Now, what is money school? What is this thing we're gonna talk about? Well, hang on, not there yet. What is money school? What is it? Well, it's information, but information is only 20% head knowledge. The rest of it is 80% your behavior. You can listen to these videos, you can watch them. If you don't do anything about it, you've wasted your time. So take notes, plan on implementing what you hear, and then it'll work for you. Second, it's participative. It only works if you put it into place. Again, 20% head knowledge, 80% behavior. Are you putting these things into practice? If you don't, well, you won't see any results. And last thing is, this is not a one and done. Well, I do this this one time and it's over. No, this is a lifelong event. My wife and I took a class like this uh, 27 plus years ago when our son was born. And I'd love to tell you we did everything exactly right since then, uh, but we didn't. But we sure learned a lot and hopefully we'll share some of that with you. So that's what Money School really is. Here's what it's not. If you've come here and you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna get this real quick microwave fix, wrong. This is a crock pot. It's gonna work over time. It's, cust it's not customized to you. It's not. This is general information. You gotta take it and make it your own. It's not easy. If it were, everybody would be millionaires. So you gotta take this and put it into practice and it really will go against the grain of some of the things you already know or heard about. All right. You ready to get into this? All right, let's talk about what Money School will cover. We've got 11 classes here, and they're all gonna be about 20, 30 minutes long, so very short. So first thing we're gonna talk about, which is the absolute foundation of everything to do with money, is a budget. And you go, oh, I don't wanna talk about budget. Well, if you don't do this first class, and if you don't implement it, the rest of them don't matter. Let me say it again. This is the foundation. You can't put a roof on a house without the foundation first. So we're starting with the foundation, which is doing a budget. And we'll go over some statistics about that. If you do a budget, you'll be in the top few percent in the country that do a budget. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about is debt. That'll be the next lesson. What about debt? You've heard good debt and bad debt. Well, we're gonna change maybe some of your paradigms on that. Next one will be about saving money. What's an emergency fund and why do you need one? Bank accounts. You know, there's about 7% of Americans don't even have a bank account. Why do you need one? Do you need one? How do you open one? We'll go through all of those. And then the one that I get paid to do on a daily basis is investing for retirement. 
And that you can't start off doing that. Again, you got to do the budget first, and then your retirement comes down a little ways. We'll explain what all that means. But we'll talk about what an IRA is, the benefits of doing a Roth IRA versus traditional 401k. We'll get into all of that. Next is insurance. You absolutely need insurance. Number one cause for personal bankruptcy is unpaid medical bills. If you don't have health insurance, you're at risk. We'll go through all the types of insurance you should have as a part of a good, successful financial plan. Next thing, mortgages. How long should I get a mortgage? How much should a mortgage be? What is this thing called a HELOC? A reverse mortgage, how does that work? We'll cover all of that. So if you're thinking about doing a mortgage, this one is for you. College planning, who's responsible for it? Should parents always pay for the college for their kids? Maybe, maybe not, depends on your situation. Where is that in the steps? How should we, where do we prioritize college planning? We'll go over that in detail and what your children can start doing soon to plan for college. It's very important, specifically the FAFSA, depending on when you're watching this video, if it's anywhere before October, that's when you should do your FAFSA. We'll cover all that in the video. This Social Security, it's going broke. It's not going broke. It won't be there. It will be there. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the facts of Social Security, when you should take it, what makes sense, what does FRA mean, what is widow's uh, benefit, your benefit. We'll talk about all of that in the Social Security session. Number 10, next to last, Medicare and Medicaid. Two different things, people get those confused. We'll go over all of that, what they all mean. How do you apply for it? When should you apply for it? When do you have to apply? Uh, and things like that. What are the requirements? We'll go with that in detail. And then the last one, and, and no financial plan is complete unless you do this as well. What are your end of life decisions? Do you have a will? Do you have a trust? You got your funeral planned out. Uh, do you have beneficiaries on all your accounts? We'll go through each of those in detail. So once you've been through all 11 classes of money school, and you got the head knowledge, then you put that into practice, you'll be on a path to a successful financial future. All right, let's jump in now. Let's get on with the budget. What is a budget? Oh, gotta love budget. Some people think budget's a straight jacket. Actually, it's not. It really is not a straight jacket. It actually frees you up to be able to go do what you wanna do when you wanna do it. Just like this picture here of a couple out shopping. Hey, my wife and I today, and most people that do budgets, they budget for things like shopping. So when you want to go buy the pair of shoes or that new whatever, you've already budgeted for it and you have the money for it. It frees you up to do what you want to do. But you got to do one. You go, oh, Mike, I've got it in my head. It doesn't work that way. All right. Budgeting is the most important factor in your financial plan. Period. End of story. That's it. If you don't do a budget, your financial plan will fall apart. I promise. All right, let's get going. So how do I do a budget, Mike? What, what, what's this thing called a budget? It's an estimate, often you itemize it, of expected income and expenses for a given period of time. So most often we budget for a month, okay? So why should you do a budget? Well, you need to know where your money's going. You get control over those finances. Know and see where your money's going. Give every single dollar a name. So right now we're, we're filming this, we're about middle of a month. So now we should be planning on what's getting ready to happen for next month. I know what my income is going to be or close to it. I kind of have an idea what my expenses are. So you can do a budget. Okay. Plan for your future expenses. What if you want to go on vacation next year? Or you got Christmas coming up in December. Plan for those future expenses. You do all that with budgeting. What a, and if you do this, you don't have crisis. Okay. You don't all of a sudden wake up like, oh, it's December. Christmas is here. I didn't think about it. Well, if you've budgeted for it, it's like, great, Christmas here. I've got my funds. Let's go shopping. Okay. It allows you to spend without having, being guilty about it. It used to be at our house, my wife come home with a new dress, a new pair of shoes, and I'd be all upset about it. Now it don't matter because we sit down the month before. We plan the budget. She's got her clothing budget. If she wants to spend it all on one pair of shoes, that's up to her. Or 27 parachute. I don't care. I know it's in the budget and we've agreed on it. Once again, it is the most important part of retirement planning, financial success. If you're not doing a budget, you cannot, it, your retirement is just not going to work. 
I just listened to a podcast the other, other day about a guy who wrote a book. It's called The Retirement Manifesto. And, and he'd been making all kinds of money through his working career, and he got ready to write this book about three to five years out from retirement, and he realized, you know what? I need to know what I'm spending before I get to retirement so I know how much to have for retirement. And if you came here at Mach 1 and you want to do a retirement analysis, we would sit down and do a budget with you first because we need to know what you're going to be spending to determine how much money you need to have in retirement. It's the chicken or the egg. How much you're going to spend will determine how much you're going to need. You got to do a budget. Is that clear? Am I being vague? You got to do a budget, period. Okay, here's some stats on budgeting. Only one in four Americans do it. You're in the top 25%. You do a budget. Do a budget. Okay. The average American spends less than four and a half hours a year planning their personal finances. Four and a half hours a year. Some people spend more time than that in a day watching TV. Turn the tube off. Get a pencil and paper out. If you're married, get your spouse there and sit down and do this budget. Okay. 80% of Americans' retirement plan is to keep working. 80%, 8 out of 10 people. Is that what you want to do? Most people don't want to do that. Here's one. Almost 60% of Americans have less than $1,000 saved. 60%. Every 10 people you know, six of them don't have $1,000 saved up. That's a staggering statistic. 20% of Americans save absolutely zero of their income. Zero. Well, no wonder 60% of them don't have $1,000 saved because 20% aren't saving anything. How about you? How much are you saving? Do you know what your savings rate is? 70% of Americans say their financial plan needs work. You may be thinking the same thing, and that's why you've chosen to watch these videos. Well, good for you. So be taking notes and then put this into practice. All right, the basics. How do I do a budget, Mike? Okay, I got it. You drilled it in my head. You got to do a budget, got to do a budget, got to do a budget. All right, so how do I do it? Well, good question. It's got to be a zero based budget. Does that mean at the end of the day you have zero money? No. Okay. You got to include everything in the budget. Everything. If you think you stop at Starbucks and get coffee three times a week, it's got to be in the budget. If you're going to buy birthday presents every three months, it's got to be in the budget. How about getting your oil changed in your car? It's got to be in the budget got to get everything in there. That's how you bust a budget by leaving things out. You got to do one every single month. January is going to be different than December. July is going to be different than August. Different things happen in different months. Don't think you can just do one to be done. You do a budget every month and then at the end of the month you got to reconcile it. You got to know, well, did I actually do what I said I was going to do? I was going to spend $300 on food. Whoops, I spent $500. Well, you got to make some adjustments. You're not Congress. You can't spend money you don't have. If you do, that's called debt. That's the next lesson, by the way. Okay. All right. Now, when you first start off doing these, it's going to take you two to three months to get it exactly right. So don't sweat it. Start one month. See how it works out. Adjust month two. See how that works out. And then by month three and four, you should be on a pretty good path knowing about where things are. Okay. So don't sweat it but at least get it started. All right. This is the main ingredient of your financial success. We've said that time and time again now. You got to do a budget, period. All right. So here's a quick example. And you know, you can do a budget with software. You can do it on the back of an envelope. It really doesn't matter how you do it. The key is to do it. So here's a real quick example for you to do a budget. So what you see here is somebody's real top line budget. They make $1,200 a month. That's the income. We put it at the top. And then we start listing out what are my expenses. No accident here that we put savings first. You need to pay yourself. And that can be in the form of a savings account, 401k, da, da, da. We'll get into that later. But pay yourself first. Now, you see all the expenses, we take them all the way down there. All of our expenses added up to exactly the same amount as we did as our income. Does it always work out that perfectly? No, but you force it to get to zero. That's what's meant by zero-based budget. You have every dollar listed out and where it's going. Does that mean you have no money left over? No, you see the first one, we started with savings. So it, you can adjust the categories, but at the bottom, it's gotta equal zero. Your income 
minus all of your expenses have to come to zero. You can put saving in there. You can put money in there that you have for pocket money, 20 bucks a month just to have around your pocket. Uh, you determine where the money goes before the month begins. So sit down, get your piece of paper at the top. Here's my income. Here's all my expenses. And when you get to the bottom, it should be zero. Now, if you got a negative number, that's a real problem. Uh, but if you end up with more money at the bottom, you didn't do it right. You got to go back and allocate that money somewhere. You got to spend it on paper before the month gets there. That is the key. All right. Get it? Sit down. Start with your income. List out each of your expenses. And at the bottom, it comes to zero. If it's a negative number, you got to go back and cut something. If it's a positive number, you got to reallocate that money. Very simple. Now, if you don't want to do it on the back of an envelope, that's okay. Here's some, you can write these down. All of these have their free budget calculators. Very easy to use. Uh, don't ever pay for one of these. Don't do that. We're about saving money here, not spending money. So any of these will work for you. I don't have a choice on either one. I made up my own, of course, so I've got my own Excel spreadsheet. The key is it doesn't matter how you do it. It's just do a budget. Okay. Every single month before the month begins. All right. Budgeting. Everybody that has income should do a budget. Everybody has an income should do a budget. I teach this class to guys coming out of prison. You know, they have a small income. They still got to do a budget. You got to get in a habit. It's a habit you build and you keep it the rest of your life. Okay. You get control over your finances by doing this. That there's no, whoops, where'd that money go? You already told it where it's going to go. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. It's a planning tool. Hey, I want to go to Hawaii on vacation two years from now. It's going to cost me X. I divide that by 24, 24 months in two years. And now I know how much money I have to save every single month so I can go to Hawaii in two years. That's simple. Plan for it. Most people put on a credit card and pay all this interest for it. You're going to be different. You're going to plan for it and pay cash. The best vacations you take are the ones that don't follow you home. Eliminates any money crisis. There, it's not a money crisis anymore. You already told the money where to go. You know where it's going. It's okay. And it, then when you save that money to go on that Hawaii vacation, when you go, you saved up for it for two years. Go have a great time. Enjoy it. You deserve it. You've earned it. You're not going to be putting it on a credit card. Have fun with it. Okay. On paper, electronic, again, it doesn't matter. Just do it. All right. Have I said it how many times now? Four or five times? Single most important factor of being successful with money. The single most important factor. So if you only watch this video and you don't watch any other, you're on the road to financial success. Okay. We like to end these with a thought of the day. And today's thought of the day is, if you aim at nothing, you will surely hit it. And that's Zig Ziglar. It's one of my favorites. If you aim at nothing, if you don't do a budget, then you're going to get just that. But if you create your budget and you've got a goal in mind, you're most likely going to hit that. All right, folks, if you have any questions for us, if you want like, hey, Mike, what about this? Here's some ways you can get questions to us and we'll be happy to answer those for you. You can comment on this video. You can do Facebook Messenger. On YouTube, you can comment on the video. You can check the link below for the Mach 1 website. And then if you just want to go to the Mach 1 website, you can hit the Contact Us button. Or on there, we have podcasts about all of these. And then if you want to give us a call, say, hey, I want to talk to that guy on that video, call us. We'll be happy to talk you through this. All right, this is Lesson 1, the most important, the foundation budgeting. If you didn't get it clear that this is the most important, rewind because this is the most important and we'll hit this multiple times throughout money school. Look forward to seeing you next week.